It's popular. We know that. People love to tie on a whopper plopper. But I often get asked, how do we know what size whopper plopper to use and when? Well, today that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be discussing what size whopper plopper to use, how to pick one. We know that we've got those size 75s, the 90s, the 110s, all the way up into those 190s. And I like to think about it two different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a whopper plopper based on wind conditions and based on the size of the bait fish that I'm targeting and take a nice little mix of the two to choose what's going on. As you can see, I've got the size 90 tied on and bait, oh, there's one right there, about second or third cast of the morning. Um, so I've got the size 90 tied on. That's a super nice fish to start the day. And if you look at the wind conditions that I have here behind me, this is just about enough wind where I'm going to go ahead and go from the 90 to the 110. Uh, the 90, obviously, as you just saw, still doing a good job. Um, but if I get up here around the corner on this point up here and the wind is a little bit stronger, I'll probably go to the 110 just because it's going to displace a little bit more water as that prop is turning. But the reason I went with the 90 is because the bait fish in this particular lake are mainly minnows and they're not very big. So I decided to go with this size. Um, if it was flat, calm, and the bait fish are really small or these minnows are small, I'm probably going to go with the 75. Um, but like I said, if the wind really gets kicking up, then I'm going to go ahead and go with the 110 or even the 130 if it gets really, really windy out. As opposed to some other top water lures, the Whopper Plopper does a nice job in that chop, okay? So it just really is, is a good lure to use on windy types of conditions. Another question I get asked often is, what is the right retrieve or the right speed when using a whopper plopper and this is one of those lures that you can really burn it there's a lot of anglers that like to bring it very very fast but as far as a good starting point when you go ahead and toss it out there listen to what's going on and this is easier on a calm day but listen when that whopper plopper is making the most noise when it's really the loudest you can hear it the farthest away that is going to be the speed that I start with. And then I will adjust from there. Um, usually it will be increasing the speed, not slowing down. But yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was out and it was different. It was more flat, calm. And so I did slow it down a little bit and the bass were just coming up. They weren't exploding hard on it. They were just coming up behind it. I could see them, they come behind it and just grab the tail. Very subtle bites. As a matter of fact, they wouldn't really dis disturb the water, the surface of the water at all. Just a very subtle bite. But start where it's the loudest and then adjust from there. And don't be afraid to really burn this lure. A plopper is just one that you can bring quickly and it maintains nice action. A lot of lures, when you bring them too quickly, lose their action. Now, what about where to throw it? Okay, well, obviously, you know, depending on the time of the year and what type of cover you've got, that type of stuff, vegetation, is gonna vary greatly. Um, and clearly you wanna throw it around as many docks and things as you can, lay downs, that type of stuff, bring it by it. But one of the nice things with this particular lure, the surface lure, is it does a nice job of calling fish up. Like I said yesterday when that wind was really calm and I could see down there 12, 15, almost 20 feet sometimes, is I was watching the bass. The bass that I caught came from the depths. They didn't come from the shoreline. This lure does a nice job of getting the curiosity of the fish way down there and coming up to them. As a matter of fact, that one I just caught here a second ago, I'm fishing a very do-nothing shoreline. There's basically nothing here. But as you can see how close I am to the shore, 
the boat is still sitting in anywhere from 13 to 16 foot of water. So it drops off really, really quickly. So literally what I'm fishing is the break. I'm fishing the drop off and that bass, the boat was sitting in about like I said, 14, 15 foot of water and came up and got it. So yes, you wanna throw it around the docks, bring it down the lay down trees over the tops of some vegetation, but it's a good open water lure too. It will really bring fish up out of the depths and investigate it like that last one I caught. Now, one question that I got, matter of fact, I just had this question last week, a viewer had asked, when would I select a whopper plopper or a buzz bait, what are the conditions? What is the different types of situations? And I thought that was an excellent question. So I wanna go over that real quickly. One, if I see a ton of debris on the water, lots of leaves and just sticks and moss or whatever, I'm gonna go with the buzz bait. The whopper plopper can get hung up with debris really, really easily. Um, as a matter of fact, yesterday I was having a heck of a time just with pine needles. But right now with the wind, things are cleaner. So the whopper plopper is a much better choice. If I have patchy vegetation, okay, where it's sticking up, um, emergent in a few places, a buzz bait will come over that better because the hook is up facing out the top where the treble hooks hanging down definitely can hang up on that stuff. So like I said, if I have emergent vegetation, debris on the water, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the buzz bait over the whopper plopper. If I really want to cover a ton of water, yes, you can cover a lot of water with a buzz bait, and I've talked about it, but if I really want to put that trolling motor pedal down and go to town, most likely I'm going to go ahead and pick the whopper plopper because I can cover more water quickly. Um, if I want to cover fish that I think are suspended or deeper and I'm trying to call them up, a whopper plopper does a better job than a buzz bait, at least in my opinion. And I also think that the Whopper Plopper is gonna be my top billing over a buzz bait when my bait fish are really, really small. Okay, like I said earlier, the minnows and stuff, I can get that size 75 or even a size 90, you know, is not that big. That's gonna be an excellent choice over the buzz bait in that particular situation. One nice thing about a buzz bait though is you can put lots of different trailers on the back of it you can really vary the sound displacement or the 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 water displacement the sound signature you can put those bigger toads on the back or a small little grub you can put a trailer hook on there if you're getting a lot of short strikes you can even take the wire and bend it a little bit so that blade clacks against the arm differently so if you're looking to make some quick and easy modifications the buzz bait has definitely got top billing. And sometimes if you change that sound signature just a little bit, change the vibration on a buzz bait, it can make the difference between getting small bites and big bites or the number of bites. So if I'm looking to mess around and, and alter things as far as variables, I'll go with a buzz bait. Now, if you'd like to check out a video on what I think is the best drop shot lure that I have ever used, go ahead and click on this one right here. And hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.